All right, hello YouTube. So uh, today I got another ILG fan. This time it is a single phase uh, 10P blower. Here's the pieces to it over here. Got the, this is a cast aluminum impeller or fan wheel. The whole rest of the housing is all cast iron. Uh, looks like somebody spray painted it one time. So I probably will restore this and uh, sandblast it down and just give it a fresh coat of paint. But the first issue is this motor. Now, this motor is interesting. It has seven leads that come out of it. It's a 3,400 RPM, so it's a two-pole. So that means that over here on the inside, you can see this is one of the start winding poles, and the other start winding pole is over here. So you kind of have like this half and this half. And then the run windings, one of them is up here, and the other one is down here so uh, what I've discovered is one of these run windings has an open circuit so uh, they go as follows you got one and three leads one and three are one side of the run winding and leads two and four are the other side and one and three are good two and four are open circuits so I need to figure out where that open circuit is occurring and if I can fix it uh, hopefully without having to do an entire rewind on this motor. So um, I'll demonstrate uh, the side that's working versus the side that's not working in a second here. All right, so I have some low voltage AC running through this. And if I go real closely here, hear that chatter? That's the magnetic field on the side. Notice it's only on the half that has the good winding. But if I go to the other half, there's nothing over here. Now, right now I only have the good winding hooked up. So what I'll do is I'm gonna pause this and I will wire up the bad side and we'll see how that works. All right, now we're back and I have the, the bad winding which is winding two to four, leads two and four. Uh, that's hooked up, and as you can see, there is nothing. It's completely dead. So, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this fixed. i got to do some troubleshooting, and if I can get it fixed, I'll be able to run this motor, run the blower, but if not, then this is going to be put on the back burner for a little while, and it's going to become another rewind project. So we will see what happens. Okay, so uh, I don't know how this happened, how this worked, but uh, I decided to just give this a try and I energized the winding that was open circuit in this motor with regular uh, 120 volts AC current from the wall. And <clears throat> when I did so, I actually got a field I, was, I had a screwdriver in here, and it actually made the magnetic field. So it started working. So I shut everything off, and then I hooked up the uh, multimeter to it. And you can see right now I've got about 10 ohms of resistance across that winding. Um, so I'm not sure if running that uh, voltage through there, if that did anything as far as maybe there was a connection that was a little weak and it kind of i don't know burned oxidation out of it and now it's working again it definitely surprised me i did not expect it to work but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and wire this all up and see if i can get this motor to run all right so uh <clears throat> i have the motor all back together i have a new line cord wired on and the terminal box is all buttoned up tight and uh I don't know what it is. I must have had some luck on my side with this because it works. And we're drawing right now. That's our current draw. It's rated for 3.2 amps under load. So uh, I think that's pretty good. Seems healthy. The bearings probably will need to be replaced just like the other one that I have. But... This is definitely uh, feels a lot better than I was kind of bummed out thinking that this motor might have been uh, had an open circuit in it and 
would have needed to be either rewound or I would have had to dig it apart and try to find, excuse me, find the open circuit. But uh, strangely enough, just hooking it up to AC power from, you know, line voltage from the wall across that open winding, somehow uh, it made it connected again. And uh, now when I check it with continuity meter, uh, there's continuity across the the uh, terminals on the end of the line cord here. Uh, so it's all good to go. Uh, I mean, I'll probably eventually give this motor its proper servicing, put new bearings, probably, uh, even though the varnish on the windings seems to be very uh, in very good condition, uh, I'll probably spray that again just to ensure that it's all good. Let it dry out, make sure there's no moisture in it first. But, yep, so it's definitely working. I'm going to put the blower back together and see if I can give this thing a run fully assembled. Well, as it turns out, uh, the news isn't so great with this fan after all. Um, I did have it running for a little while, and it was running, getting up to full speed. But the issue I was having was it was drawing a little bit too much current. Uh, we were running, it's, the, the motor is rated for 3.2 amps at, um, when it's wired for 115 and it's rated for 1.6 at 2.30. I have it wired for 1.15, and I had it plugged in the wall, running fine, but it was drawing about 3.9 to 4 amps. So it was drawing too much current, and I had shut it down for a little bit, and then when I went to start it again, it started, and it sounded like it would barely, I don't even know if it was reaching a quarter of its full RPM. And it would just sit there and it was drawing too much current. So there's definitely an issue. Uh, I did check these wires again. And now the same circuit before that was giving me trouble. It is now open again. So I'm going to have to dig further into this. I'm really hoping that I don't have to rewind this motor. But if it comes down to it, that'll be another rewind project for another day. But um I don't know. We'll see. It's uh, not looking too good for this thing, though. All right, so I've done a little bit of digging in this motor. I didn't want to have to do this, but uh, this is pretty much a last resort. If I cannot find the problem inside here, then this thing's going to need a rewind. So um, what I've discovered so far is that lead 2, which is one of the leads I was having trouble with, I've taken the joint apart. And the joint is actually making connection there. But it goes down in here. And these, well, this wire is pretty brittle. And that's where it stops. I'm trying to trace from there where it goes. But lead 4, which is here. You can see I have, this is the actual magnet wire uh, right here. It goes around underneath here. Um, and... Let me see, how does it go? I think it goes down around underneath and it comes out here and it goes over to this and goes down into the winding. So I've made a little diagram here and you can see I have lead four going down and in to this slot right here. So I would imagine since the coil's going this way, lead two should be coming out of one of these slots over on this side coming out in this direction. 2 and 4 does this pole, and then 1 and 3 does this pole. Uh, normally, this could all just be one connection, and you could just have two leads, but since this is a dual-voltage motor, it has it set up so that if you wire these two poles in parallel, you'll run it on the low-voltage setting, and if you run them in series with each other, then you'll get the high-voltage setting. So that's how that's done with this two-pole motor. But... Um, but yeah, so I still have some digging to go and see. Hopefully I find it. The most nerve-wracking part of this is, you know, these, these old magnet wires can get kind of brittle over time. And if I break one, you know, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but uh, depending on where it breaks, if it breaks somewhere down inside where it's hard to get to, that could pretty much be the end of this motor. Uh, and then it'll need to be rewound. So hopefully, I'm trying my best to be very careful with this, and we'll see. If I am able to save this, I'm going to call it a miracle. So see what happens. 
So, uh, I did a little bit more digging, and it turns out, I thought it was a little funny. I said, why did these two wires, the ones that were kind of deteriorated, it's like, why did this go into the coil somewhere, and then it seemed like they both went into the coil in the same spot? And I thought that that was kind of strange, because usually one of these type of wires gets bonded to a magnet wire, and that's your joint. You don't usually have the leads bonded together. And especially since there was another joint right here, I did not expect to see a joint here. But as you can see, these two are uh, connected together. And this lead right here that I'm holding is lead number two. And what do you see here? I put marks. This is four. So this is where lead four connects. So two is connected right to four which means that what I originally thought when I did my testing is I was getting continuity to four here. I thought this was lead four, but in fact, this is where lead number two goes into the motor, and that means that lead four must come out over here somewhere. So I need to do a little more digging to find out, but I'm going to check this joint for continuity and see. I really believe that this is the failure point of this motor, so we're going to find out. So I made another discovery. Now I realize why this was done like this. This motor on the tag here says that it is thermally thermal overload protected. And I knew that there must be a thermal sensor somewhere in this motor. Well, this is the sensor. And I believe that somewhere something is going on with this and it's causing it to not have continuity. Uh, because right now, yeah, you can kind of see... As I move the wire around, it makes and breaks. This is obviously not a really super great meter, but it just gives me an idea. So I know that the problem is something to do with this thermal overload protector. So I'm going to dig this apart and see what I can find. Well, here's the overload sensor, and you can see how corroded all of this is. Um, so it's not making continuity, but if I take something and bridge the gap between the wires, you can see I'm making the light turn on and off. So, um, so there's our issue. So I'm going to have to see. I don't know if I can order a new one of these or if it's something where I could just cut it out and just kind of, you know, leave it out of the motor and it won't be thermally protected anymore but I guess I could use a, an external fuse or something on it just to ensure that it's not uh, you know overcurrenting or anything like that so uh, we'll see what I do here so a uh, little update here I haven't disconnected this yet but um, <clears throat> I have tested the resistance of both poles of this motor and I'm getting 7.8 ohms for both poles, bypassing this. If I don't bypass this, I get like 1,200 kilo ohms. Uh, if, I, if I'm lucky and I twist this around and actually get it to make connection. So I'm um, guessing that this is definitely the issue. Uh, when I cut this out, I'll have two good windings that are of equal resistance. And... Most likely, I'll just eliminate this thermal overload protector, and I will install some kind of external um, overload thermal protection of some sort, whether it's another sensor that I can stick in here against the winding or something completely external. Uh, but I'm going to just eliminate this because this clearly is causing a problem. All right, so now I've uh, <clears throat> I've gotten all the connections made. You can see I have a new lead wire. Uh, this was the one that was connected to the, what the heck did I do with it? The old busted up sensor. Here it is. Okay, so this was lead number two. So now that has been replaced and I bypassed it. So it's been connected directly into the uh, magnet wire. So you can see I got some brand new fiberglass insulating sheeting covering that. Uh, I also have a small piece down inside here that covers another joint that I had exposed. 
But now they're all laced up nice and tight. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish out this lacing wire. This this is like a fiberglass or I think it's fiberglass and nylon or uh, I don't know. There's a few different materials in it. But this uh, this lace, I'm going to finish tying this around pretty much just till I run out of it. Just because it's there. I have it. So I might as well use it. And um, after that, I will spray a few coats of insulating varnish. Uh, to cover this winding again and just make sure it's all sealed up nice and tight then I'll probably bake it with some low voltage AC and um, and after that this motor should be good and this thing ought to run great so I cannot wait to see the results all right so finally I have this thing all tied up I sprayed a little layer of uh, insulating varnish on here and I'm letting it dry I'll probably put a few more coats on there just to make sure that it's good and covered. But um, I cannot wait to see this motor run because I know it's going to run now. I, I know it's good. I've tested the resistance on all of the leads and they all check out to work uh, to, you know, to what they're supposed to be. Um, and yeah, this is going to be really neat. I did not think. That I was going to be able to save this motor. Uh, you know, I had hopes for it in the beginning and then I kind of lost hope with it. And uh, thanks to, I'll give, give a little shout out here to David Allen. Uh, he suggested to me, he said, why don't you slice into it a little bit and uh, see where that lead goes and see if the connection is bad. Because the fact that the winding was in such good shape, I mean, you look here, this this varnish looks perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with any of this and the other side is the same way so it didn't look burned so there would be really no reason for this motor to just stop working unless one of the junction points had corroded and that was why uh, or like I discovered with this motor the thermal overload protector uh, was actually corroded and went bad so now that that's been removed, I'll have to find another way to protect this motor from thermal overload. But uh, aside from that, uh, I'm going to see once I get this back together, hopefully it will run within its rated current spec. Uh, before, I was drawing about 4 amps, and it's only rated for 3.2. So I'm kind of I'm hoping that it's actually going to run a little bit under that spec uh, when I get it back together. But we'll find out soon.